Shalom, everybody. Welcome to this week's journey through Torah. This week we are in Shelech Lecha. We are in the portion where Israel is sending spies into the land. You know why we're going to say, are they really spies? What are they really sending out to do? Um, they're sending spies into the land to go check it out. And they're going to check to see if God really meant what he said. They're going to go check and see if his promises are really true and if they can really trust him or not, if they can go into this land, right? wrong. Okay. This is not what this is about at all. And we're going to relate this to our walk today and the things that Yahweh has called us to do in following him as well. They had to learn to trust him. They had to learn to walk in faith. So do we. So do we. And that's why before we get to Numbers chapters 13 to 15, we're going to take a stop in Hebrews 3. All right. So when we look in Hebrews 3 verses 7 to 19, I could pull a couple things out here for you. We're emphasizing the last part of it, but uh, I do think it's good to just kind of set it up and just to read through it, okay? So Hebrews 3, 7 to 19 says, Therefore, just as Aruach HaKodesh says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion on the day of testing in the wilderness. There your fathers put me to the test, though they saw my works for 40 years. Therefore, I was provoked by this generation, and I said, they always go astray in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Verse 11, As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Take care, brothers and sisters, that none of you has an evil heart of unbelief that falls away from the living God. But encourage one another day by day, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partners of Messiah if we hold our original conviction firm until the end. Verse 15, as it is said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Now, which, which ones heard and rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt with Moses? And with whom was he provoked for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? Verse 18. And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest? Was it not those who were disobedient? So we see that they were not able to enter in because of lack of trust or lack of faith. So what we have here is, is saying to stand faithful and to stand in faith, to trust God, to believe him and be obedient. Now, what this has to do with this partial that we're looking at here is when they were going into the land, they were going to, on a, on a fact-finding mission, okay? They were just going to gather information and bring it back and to give the report of the land, but they had to insert a bias into it. They had to insert a lack of faith into it. They, what they, The things that they saw were true, but the way they gave the report was tainted through their lack of faith and lack of, of being obedient to what Yahweh had given them to do. And guys, if we're not careful, that same thing can happen to us as well. When we approach the Word of God, are we approaching it in faith? Or are we just reading stories? Do we approach it saying, this is what Yahweh has given me for means of life and understanding and how to live and how to hear his heart and hear his voice and how to walk with him? Or is it just, yeah, he says that, but does he mean it really? You know, um, we need to learn to trust him and follow him. And when, when the people came back, the 12 were sent into the land, right? And when they came back, they didn't come back as a unified 12. They came back as 10 verses two. Caleb and Yehoshua were the only two that were standing and saying, but Yahweh said, this is ours. It's faithful. You know, he, and so let's go do it. But 10 people distainted and disheartened the entire nation of Israel. Lack of faith can spread like a cancer. It's just, it's terrible. But yet, if we can stand in faith, then we can help encourage one another and lift each other up. And if we're standing in faith and believing what Yahweh has given to us, then we will be obedient in what he says. And the same thing relates in the, what Yeshua's disciples were told, and same thing we hear from Yeshua himself as well. If you love me, keep my commandments, right? Anyway, moving in here. Peter puts it this way, 1 Peter 2, 7 says, Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But to them which are disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. See that? He's, he's comparing and con contrasting belief with disobedience. If you believe, you will be obedient. If you do not believe, you will be disobedient. 
See that? Because what you believe affects your decisions. What you believe affects your day-to-day how you do things. The things that you really feel are important are the things you are working towards during, during and throughout the day. I mean, even speaking in Hebrew, belief and faith in Hebrew, it's the same word. Amen. Emunah. Say it's the same word. We touched on this a little bit in, in last week's portion, Beha, Beha Aloha as well. So in Genesis 15, 6, we read, He believed Adonai, and it was credited to him as righteousness. So therefore, if we believe, we will be obedient. If we do not believe, we will not be obedient. In John 14, verses 23 and 24, Yeshua says, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the words you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. So again, we have this picture of Yeshua saying, If you love me, you'll keep my commandments, which we see in John chapters 14 and 15 is repeated more than once. Okay, So he says, If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And these things that I'm telling you, these are the same things that the Father has given. I'm, I'm telling you, you can walk in these things. You can have these his words written on your heart. It's not just a matter of reading them in a scroll or reading them in a book or reading them on t- tablets of stone. These are the words that are to be written on your heart. And these are how we are to live. We are to live in faith. And faith is an action. Read the book of James. What part of James? The whole book. Read the book of James. Faith is an action. Belief is an action. And it says, I believe, therefore I do. I have faith, therefore I do. Even uh, in the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, you know, the, the great faith chapter, right? All through that we read, so so and so had faith, therefore they did something. I mean, all throughout that whole thing, it's equated. So you have faith, therefore something was done. Okay, so again, uh, it's not about just having the works, but it's because we believe, because we have faith, therefore we do. Hebrews 4, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, let us be terrified of the possibility that even though the promise of entering his rest remains, any one of you might be judged to have fallen short of it. For good news has also been proclaimed to us, just as it was to them, but the message they heard did not do them any good, because those who heard it did not combine it with trust, or com- they did not combine it with faith. Luke 11, or Luke 8, verses 11 to 15. So the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Those beside the road are the ones who have heard, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart, so they may not believe and be saved. But those on the rocky places are the ones who, when they hear, they accept the word with joy, but they have no root. So they believe for a season and in a time of testing, fall away. Verse 14. Now, that which fell into the thorns are those who were hearing, but as they go along the way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and they do not bear mature fruit. But the seed and the good soil are those with a praiseworthy and good heart, who have heard the word and hold fast and bear fruit with patient endurance. Uh, In verse 15, we read, good heart, good faith, right? A good soil is saying, we trust Yahweh. We trust him. We receive the word. It's all the same word, but it was received differently. And so do we allow that seed, the word of God, to bear fruit in our lives? Do we allow the roots to go deep into our lives? Or Because if we don't, guess what? When trials come, testing comes, uh, the sun comes up midday and it's harsh, we could perish because we're, we don't have those deep roots looking for that living water right? So here's what happens. And they're off in the wilderness and it says they, they failed in their trust. Can you imagine being in such a place to where the word of Yahweh does not do you any good because you didn't trust? That's, that's mind boggling to me. And it's like the word of Yahweh, the word of God himself to really not have any effect in your life because you don't trust him. See, so the word of God is true. But we have to be willing to trust him and follow him in the midst of all of that. So where in the wilderness did Israel fail in their trust? They had many testings, many trials, many things. But what was kind of the last straw, per se, right? Uh, Sending the spies into the land. Sending the the ones to go tour the land and then return with a report. 
would they do this in faith? And, and the answer is no, they did not. No, they did not. So why did God send them out there in the first place? Well, the way this reads, you can kind of say, okay, God sent them. But if, if you go through and you find uh, parallel scriptures through in the other places in the Torah, you can see it kind of reads a little more like the people came to Moses. Moses went to Yahweh and Yahweh says, okay, fine. So it's not that Yahweh says, I want you to send them. He says, okay, send, send them. But he says in this Parsha, Numbers 13, 1 and 2, he says, Shalech Lecha, send them for you. He didn't say send them for me. He said, send them for you, which implies you're the ones that want this done. And this is affirmed in Deuteronomy 1, verses 21 to 23, when Moshe says, look, you know, Yahweh placed the land before you go up and take it. And you said, maybe we should send people to go spy it out. And I thought, okay, seems like a decent idea. So I took it to God and God said, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but you do get the point here, right? You can go back and read it. So who were the men that were sent? Was it just anyone, any random guys? No, that was not. This was leaders in the people of Israel, people who should have stood and had faith. I wonder if this is one of the, if the people here were parts of the 70 elders that we talked about in, in the last week's portion. I don't know, but it says that they were leaders, princes among the people. They were from each tribe, everyone a chief, everyone in a place of leadership. I want to phrase it this way. They were ones who knew better. They were ones who knew better. They were ones who knew God is going to send us in there. He, we have a great task ahead of us and we need to do so and approach this in a manner of faith. We need to see the land as Yahweh sees the land. We need to see the fruit of the land, the people that are already there. We need to do this as Yahweh has told us to do this. It's not a matter of can we do the task. It's a matter of are, are God's promises true? And how you go into that will affect your mindset and the whole thing. Okay. Uh, keep in mind as well, did they have manna when they went into the land? No, the manna was for when they were in the wilderness. When all of Israel went in or went into the land of Israel, the manna stopped. Okay. The, the manna was for the wilderness. So when the spies went into the land, did they get the manna? I submit to you, my opinion, no, they tasted the fruit of the land. Which makes me think of the scripture says, taste and see that the Lord is good, right? Um, so again, were the people of Israel, were they willing to submit themselves to the vision and the promise given to Israel by Yahweh, or were they going to try to do what was right in their own eyes? And we can face that same situation as well. How often do we question God's motives when we're asked to do something? When we say, oh, this is what I'm reading in the scripture. This is what God wants me to do, but does it really work that way? I mean, is this really for me? Can I really do this? You know, or we just kind of feel that God is asking us to go help somebody or go do something or go say, you know, help, help people out. And we're like, yeah, but did he really, you know, we need to have some faith. We need to trust him. Deuteronomy 5, uh, 529 says, oh, that they had such a heart as this always as what, what is Yahweh saying? I wish their heart was like this all the time. Like what? To fear me and to keep all my commandments, that it might go well with them and their descendants forever. See that? That's, that's what he's saying, that they will fear me and keep my commandments, that it will go well with them and their descendants forever. In other words, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rephrase it this way, hear my voice, that they just listen to me, that they just do what I'm asking them to do, that it, that it, so that it goes well with them and all those that were to come from them, that they benefit as an individual and that they benefit as a nation from walking with me. Psalm 81, 11 to 13 says, but my people did not listen to my voice. Israel would not submit to me. So I gave them over to their stubborn hearts to follow their own counsels. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. Proverbs 16, one through three says, the plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from Yahweh. All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes but Yahweh weighs the spirit. Commit your work to Yahweh and your plans will be established. So it's a matter of, are we going to approach the things of Yahweh by submitting to him and his word and the things that lay in front of us? Okay. So that's something to, to bring out to, to now as well. All right. Um, now we get to this word about spying out the land. Were they really spies? 
Um, you know, the word that's used there is tour. The word used there is tour. And when I say tour, what does it make you think of? Like you go on a tour. What do you do when you go on a tour? Well, you go check everything out. You go see the sites. You go look at the things. You do the toury things. Guess what this word tour means? Exactly that. Okay. They weren't sent on, on a, a recon mission to go spy out for them. No, they were sent to just go check it out. Be tourists. Go look at everything and then bring back and, and bring back the reports and tell us what you see. Right. There were some certain, certain things are like, bring it back and tell us what you see. Right. So when he says here, Shalach Lecha and Ashim Veyaturu et Eretz Canaan, send men, send men to spy out the land of Canaan. So this word tour is the word that's used there to go and be tourists in the land of Canaan and check it out. Go wander around all the land, go to the hill countries, go to the Negev, go to the desert, go all over the place and bring report back. Okay. Now this is what they were to do in regards to the promise. They were to go check out all the things of the promise. But in contrast, we see something a little later in this portion after they bring the negative report back the, literally it's an evil report, a slanderous report against the land, against the promises that Yahweh gave them. And they disheartened all the nation, all the people. That's when we're given the, uh, the command to wear a to wear tassels on the corners or on the edges and the border of your garment, right? And the purpose of which is specific. Verse 39 says, and it will be a tassel for you to look at. And remember all the commandments of Yahweh to do them, not to follow after your own heart and your own eyes. Guess what guys? The Hebrew, velo taturu. This word taturu is the word tour. The same thing that was used when he says, I'm sending you to go tour the land. He says, so this command of to wear the sitio was in direct relationship to the negative report they brought back against the promises of Yahweh. So Yahweh says, I want you to wear these on the edges of your garment to remind you that you do not allow your eyes to go touring all over the place without having your heart focused on me. Okay. He says that you go following after your eyes, whoring after your own eyes. It's pretty harsh. That's the way he said it. So the idea here is, is that we keep the commandments of Yahweh. We keep his word. If we would have went into the land, keeping the promise of his word in front of us, that would have an impact on the land. And we could be reading a different story in the Torah, but no, they, they, they they let their eyes wander all over the place and got, got pulled aside because, you know, eyes shiny and, and all these other distractions, all these other things. Whereas they didn't let their heart, the spirit of Yahweh within them to show them what they wanted to see. They got distracted by all these other things. And that's what Yahweh is telling us to do in life, that we keep following him, that we keep his commandments, that we follow after his word, his heart. Don't, don't worry about the things that draw your eyes, okay? Whether they're good or bad or shiny or what, just don't worry about the things that just draw your eyes, but do my word, keep my commandments, keep them close to your heart, write them within you so that you will do them. Right. Uh, so again, regarding the, the tassels and, and numbers 15, 38 to 40, say to the people of Israel, make tassels on the corners, on the kanaf, on the edge or extremity of your garments and put a blue cord on each tassel. And you are to do this for all time to come. The tassels will serve as reminders. And each time you see them, you will remember my commands and obey them. That's the purpose. And then you will not turn away from me and follow your own wishes and desires. And uh, again, when it says to seek not your own heart and not your own eyes after which you go whoring, a couple things relate here. Not, don't seek after your own heart. Jeremiah 17, 9 says that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You know, a lot of times we do things we're like, yes, but God knows my heart. And that's exactly the problem. He does know our heart. And unless it is completely and totally submitted to Yahweh, it's deceitful. So we have to make sure that we are completely and totally submitted to Yahweh. Delight yourself in Yahweh and he will give you the desires of your heart. When we do not delight ourselves in Yahweh, the desires of our heart are misaligned. Okay, so we need to make sure that we are pursuing Yahweh in his ways. And then he says, uh, or pursuing your own eyes after which you go whoring. First John 2, 16 relates to that as well. It says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not the father, but is of the world. Back to Numbers 15, 38 to 40, verse 40 says that the tassels, the sisiot, 
will remind you to keep my commands and that you belong completely to me. See that? That you belong completely to him. That we are wholehearted to Yahweh. It is to remind us that when we see them, that is to remind us that we keep the word of Yahweh. We do that, that we belong to him. He redeemed us. We belong to him. So if we get the idea that we're going to go do something else, no, we belong to him. Okay, that's what it's teaching us. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, if you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. See, we serve him with all our heart and we serve him with all that we do, which leads to an interesting thing. Yahweh says we are to serve him wholeheartedly. And, and all this is brought in with the idea of, I'm going to bring you into the land. I mean, I'm going to show you these things. And their eyes were averted to all the other things and they lost hope. They lost focus. But yet we're to serve him wholeheartedly. When we go into the promise, when we see the land, we're to do this wholeheartedly. Guess what, guys? We see this in a matter of restoration again. When Yahweh himself says there is one thing, and there's only one thing, literally, that he says in the entirety of Scripture that he is going to do wholeheartedly. Guess what it is? Let's look at it. Jeremiah 32, verses 37 to 41. I will certainly bring my people back again from all the countries where I will scatter them in my fury. And I will bring them back to this very city and let them live in peace and safety. They will be my people and I will be their God. And I will give them one heart and one purpose to worship me forever for their own good and for the good of all their descendants. Verse 40. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them and I will never stop doing good for them. I will put a desire in their hearts to worship me and they will never leave me. I will find joy in doing good for them, and I will faithfully and wholeheartedly plant them in this land. See that? Yahweh says, I will faithfully and wholeheartedly plant them in this land when I gather them in from all the places where they have been scattered, and they come back into this land. What land? The land that he promised Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. The land he promised to Israel. The land that these spies we're, we're now railing against and speaking defiantly against and bringing slander against. Yahweh says, this is a land that I have for you. This is a place that I have for you, right? Are we going to be faithful? Are we going to do as he says and just follow him? It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what's going on. We need to follow him. And that's what the Sitziot were for, to remind us wholeheartedly follow Yahweh because he said he is going to wholeheartedly restore all Israel. He is going to wholeheartedly bring them back from all the places where they've been scattered, and he will bring them all back home and bring them all back and plant them in this land. Any coincidence that we read in Revelation about the new Jerusalem? Because guess what? It's about Israel, <laughs> about Israel. Okay, so leads to us in our hearts. What are, the, what are our desires truly? What are the things that we really want? Do we want what was, you know, Egypt? Do we want what was? Oh, I wish we could go back to Egypt for the leeks and the garlic and the fishes. Now, they were killing us there and killing off our kids, but man, they had great food, right? Is that what we want? Or do we want the life in the wilderness now? No. See, the, see, the idea was to go into the promise. Do we want what Yahweh has for us? He, he had them in, in Mitzrayim, but he brought them out to the wilderness to reveal himself to them so that he could bring them to the promise. There were temporary things to happen to go into the destination of following into the promise. That's what Yahweh has for us. Are we willing to do that? Are we constantly looking back to the way things used to be? Or, no, I really like where I'm at right now. I don't want to move at all. Or looking forward to head to following and trusting Yahweh and walking with him. Yeshua says, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. In other words, we follow him because we believe him. If we're not careful, fear will paralyze you. But faith will keep you walking forward. Fear will put you in a situation where I don't want to do anything because what if it gets worse? Faith will say, I'm going to continue in the steps that Yahweh has for me because he is with me. It doesn't matter what, what lies ahead. He is with me. 1 John 4, 16 to 18 says, So we've come to know and believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this is love perfected with us, 
so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. In other words, guys, if we love him, what do we have to fear? Yeah, things can happen, but what do we have to really fear? We walk in faith. Faith is an action. Faith is not a passive thought. Faith means I believe, therefore I follow. I believe, therefore I have faith. 1 Thessalonians 1.3 says, Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach in the sight of God our Father. If we love him, we keep his commandments. Just as Yeshua said, if we love him, we follow him, just as Yeshua asked his disciples to do. And if we love him, we will walk in his ways. That's it, guys. That we surrender to him wholeheartedly, that we serve him, that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and all our might, and each other as ourselves. So that's what Yahweh's called us to do. And when we were going into the promises that he has for us today, it's no different than the promises he gave to Israel then going into the land. I have things ahead of you. Are you going to have faith? I have things in your life that I desire for you. Are you going to have faith? Are we going to be looking back? Are we going to be stuck where we're at? Or are we going to walk in faith towards what the Father has for us? Don't give up, but keep walking. All right. Well, guys, that's all I have for you today. Um, I pray this has been an encouragement to you. I pray this has been challenging to you. I pray this has been a blessing for you as well. And if it has been a blessing to you, then please share it. Whatever avenue you watch or you listen, uh, if it's blessed you, it's going to bless somebody else, right? So please share them, uh, these teachings to help get that out there too, okay? And if this has been a blessing to you, then please consider making a donation so that we can continue developing and creating these videos to help get them out there, okay? So uh, with that, guys, be blessed, be a blessing, and shalom.